Hey, what's up, everybody? If you haven't by now, you probably have watched the Game Changers documentary. And if you have, uh, maybe you've gone vegan for a couple of weeks and then realized that you still want to eat meat. And so you've gone back to what works and back to the habits and, and everything that you're already doing. And, uh, and maybe you've stuck with it, you know, wherever you're at in your journey with, with regards to diet, it can be a massively confusing conundrum when, it, when faced with so much different information, so much research. Uh, and I have to be honest, myself, whenever I'm watching information, I feel the, the squirrel mentality, you know, looking in every direction whenever I hear something new. And so you're not alone. <laughs> I make that very clear that, that it triggers all of us in so many different ways because it's making us question what we're doing on a regular basis. And if we don't question, I think that, um, you know, it's actually a really healthy process. And so whether you're on the fence, uh, vegan, or whether you are vegan, or carnivore, or uh, omnivore, pescatarian, vegetarian, you know, whatever you're doing, I think it's good to question our, our daily practice. And so uh, I find it amusing sometimes when people get angry when you start questioning diet, uh, because, because that's sort of their lifeline to their to their lifestyle, and and we why not bring some humor in? Because it's it's just kind of a, a, a crazy storm of information when when that's happening. Hey, Aaron, nice to nice to hear from you. So you know, what do we do with this information? Uh, you know, how how does it land for you? I'm I'm curious to hear how people went through this experience when they when they watched the documentary or any of different ones maybe you watch the the keto documentary or the one on paleo uh or the one that's you know uh promoting just carbohydrate only diets or maybe you've looked into being a frugivore and eating only fruits you know i'm so curious to hear how everybody's doing on this discussion because it's such an important one that's affecting all of us so the reason i put debunking it's because I don't think, I truly don't feel we're ever going to find the best diet uh, because it doesn't exist because guess what? We're all unique individuals. We all have a different microbiome. We all have a different genetic makeup. We all have different life circumstances that are programming us constantly. So we can be on the endless loop in the, in the hamster wheel of trying to find the right diet. And guess what? We're not going to get anywhere because we have to make this experience super unique for us. And how do we do that? I'm, I'm going to get into that. But let's, let's just sort of break down some of the basic information that, that uh, maybe was pretty compelling for people watching this documentary. Now, from my, 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 the nurturing, empathetic side of me just, you know, cheers uh, when I watch stuff like this because I, I like the idea of not harming animals. That's, that's um, you know, when I think of like what would be the most ethical way to eat, maybe it would involve not hurting someone. Uh, so, you know, I, I cheer for that. Um, but, or and, uh, when I'm seeing information blasted about how all meat is bad, we know that that's just not true. You know, so I, I call myself um, uh, plant-based, plant-focused. I've eaten meat in the past and, and up until uh, six, seven months ago, um, I, I, was, I was having a little bit of meat here and there, um, but I don't anymore. And, and I go through different cycles. And, and so the reason I say all this stuff is because it's totally confusing. But let's not say all meat is bad, you know, unless we're in the category of we don't want to harm animals. And I get that and I feel that deeply and, and I'm right there with you. And not all of us are there yet. And not all of us are going to feel that way. And it's totally okay. Wherever you're at on your dietary choices, um, sustainability or just ease of eating a certain way just bless it all it's it's all good it's exactly where you need to be and it's exactly where you are so let's just take some of that stress away so um, my challenge with a documentary like this is when we're labeling something all one way we get into problems because we know that a ketogenic diet where people are eating higher meat diets or increasing ketones um, that's having a profound effect on the body uh, just like if someone was to follow a proper carnivore diet where they're eating nose to tail the way that Dr. Paul Saladino describes, um, there's some really healthy benefits to doing that. Um, is it enjoyable? I mean, I haven't done it personally. I, I, I try. I was about to do it, but I, I just couldn't bring myself to doing it. Uh, and I know patients who have done it or people that have done it. I've had friends that have done it. 
Um, and so I know that there's a role, and this is part of one of our teachings is diet variation. You know, we don't need to constantly keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting, you know, better and better results. We can be open to having a variable diet, and that's totally okay. Again, wherever you are is exactly where you need to be. So we can own that for ourselves, and let's not judge others for how they're eating or whether, you know, whether or not they're doing it right or wrong. Uh, that's not up to us to decide. How we do decide that is we find a unique profile. We can look at someone's uh, genetics. We can find out what are you predisposed to. I mean, Dr. Sonia and I are going to get on a, a podcast here soon and discuss our journey through DNA testing, what it's showing us. It's been really valuable. But there's DNA testing. Maybe you're more inclined to having a higher protein, lower carbohydrate type of diet. Your genes seem to respond well to that. Uh, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're better with a higher saturated fat uh, diet and, and uh, low carb or high carb and then low protein or high protein. You may have a predisposition for working with one or more different types of uh, food groups in a higher ratio versus another. So there's a genetic component. Where's your ancestry from? Maybe you need to eat more like your ancestors did. So there's a discussion on that. Then there's food sensitivities. You know, a lot of us feel better when we switch to more of a mono diet because we're cutting out a lot of garbage. And that's just, that should happen no matter what diet we're doing, whether you're keto, vegetarian, carnivore, whatever. For the most part, if we cut out garbage foods, we're gonna start feeling better. And we can all agree that that's, that's a reality. So, um, you know, so if there's food sensitivity testing. And then there's micronutrient testing. Based on the diet that you're eating, are you sufficient in B vitamins and phospholipids and essential fatty acids and amino acids and um, saturated fats and unsaturated fats, like how, how are you doing nutritionally? So that's another side of things is like, what's the biochemical makeup of your body based on how you're eating? And then there's microbiology testing. You can look and see how the microbes are doing. Are you fighting off infections or is there higher yeast or parasites? Is there other things going on? Because, you know, when we start breaking it down, we're a whole lot more complicated than just what are the best macronutrients to put in the body. Um, so maybe that scares the crap out of you. <laughs> maybe it means that you don't want to deal with any of that information and that's totally fine too. You know, we, you know, not everybody's going to take a deep dive and, and test all these things. So, you know, what is, where does that leave us? Well, we can look into just doing self experimentation. You know, how do I feel after a week of doing foods this kind of way? How do I feel after a week of doing foods this kind of way? And we can just self experiment. And I encourage everybody, at least, you know, if you can, once a year, at least do some basic lab work so you can find out if you're more inflamed or how your lipids are doing or cholesterol levels, how's your thyroid doing, how are some of your hormones doing. You know, it's really good information to get an assessment of how your body's responding to what you're exposing it to. So this whole idea of whether or not someone should be vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, whatever, whatever, it's going to come down to how our body's performing. Get a subjective experience of that and then objectively wherever you can um, <clears throat> you know when people hear doing testing they think oh shoot testing costs a lot of money i don't want to spend money on my my health i don't want to look at tests i just want to you know go by how i feel wherever you're at whatever position you're in you know just own that uh and and see what you can get done through you know the regular medical system maybe you've got a doctor that'll champion some of your support into looking in or investigating you know whatever that is for you you know go go to it um, but if we don't start to incorporate individualized care we get stuck in this generalization and then we're constantly looking at the squirrel right we're constantly getting distracted with what's the best diet and uh, dr. David Wardy and I on our, on our podcast the dr. dads did a, a thorough discussion of this and I shared some of my challenges um, and sharing this information because, like I said, we all are prone to, to wondering, you know, what's the best thing for us. But again, if we don't break it down and make it individualized, we're just making general assumptions. Now, people can pick apart the science that was like, expressed on, on the, the video. There's some compelling, like, draw-dropping things when it came to looking at the, the athletes, you know, after a night of vegetarian and, and see the kind of effect it had on erections uh, the following morning. I mean, there's some wow factor in shock uh, as for like blood flow and things like that. Um, you know, interesting gimmicks to, to show and, and whether or not that was a real phenomenon based on, on that. I mean, that's not the point I don't think of the, of, of where we should, you know, hang our hats on what, what we decide. Um, 
And then same thing with, you know, the looking at the coagulation in the blood. Well, did they use free range grass fed organic meats when they were, when they were feeding the, the athletes, uh, the meat dishes, you know, what were the, what was the food cooked in? Like, did, were they using canola oils and other things that are going to cause blood coagulation, you know? So at the end of the day, just by, from a visual point of view, there was definitely a wow factor, whether or not that was hard and fast true for someone eating like a really proper uh, meat eating type of diet that remains to be seen. So at the end of the day, I think that we have to take all this information, uh, take what works for us, get rid of what doesn't, apply it wherever possible, do your own unique testing to find out where you sit from a nutritional status point of view and what actually works for your genes and, and what works from a, an immune perspective and from a gut bacteria perspective and what kind of symptoms are you dealing with? Like maybe you have some serious dysbiosis or bloating or gas or some serious digestive issues and you need to make a switch. Well, it's a great time to experiment. And when you start feeling better from that switch and experimentation, be open to questioning whether or not you're doing everything right again. I mean, I've been a naturopathic doctor since, uh, well, for, well, I started school in 2003, so I've been a doctor for 16 years uh, or in training of it. And I've been tweaking my diet, you know, probably well before that and constantly learning as we go. So we don't have it all figured out, but we definitely have tools to help people find out what's more specific. And I know so much more now than I did, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So I, and my heart goes out to any of you that are really challenged by this uh, discussion. But at the end of the day, it's fun. It's fun to talk about, like, what should we be doing? Uh, and I don't think that we should be condemning or um, finding out where uh, people are going wrong. Like, let's find similarity. There's a beautiful synergy and uh, in all these types of diets that are looking more uh, from a purist point of view of purification. So you know, we're not looking at the typical food pyramids or the SAD diet, the standard American diet. We're looking at things from a purest point of view. Let's look for organic foods. So if you're going to have animal products, grass-fed, free-range, organic, you know, if you're eating vegetables, try to get non-GMO organic vegetables, you know, get rid of the processed foods, decrease sugar. Maybe dairy doesn't work for you. Maybe gluten doesn't work for you. You know, start to experiment with some of these things and, and make this unique. And then you can just call your diet the me diet instead of the vegetarian diet or the vegan diet or the carnivore diet, I'm just having the diet that suits me best. And this is the new diet, it's called the me diet. And you can own that for yourself and not get stuck in this um, endless conversation of what's right, what's wrong. And you know, while people are arguing over that, you can just sink into your, uh, to your me diet and, and own that and, and be okay with it. Because there's no judging here. And uh, there shouldn't be any judging towards ourselves. At the end of the day, if we can bless the food, give thanks, have gratitude for the fact that it's on our plate and we're nourishing our bodies in the way that we know how, there's a, there's a victory right there. So <clears throat> lots to say on this, but uh, hopefully you got the gist of what I, I'm expressing. And uh, debunking anything that's saying things have to be one certain way uh, is always a, a fun conversation. So please share. Let me know uh, where you what you liked about the documentary, what triggered you, uh, where you, th what where you, th maybe you find fault in what I'm saying and bring it, you know, I just want to, I want to hear a conversation dialogue on this because uh, like I said, in the, the number of years that I've been a doctor, if we don't get unique and specific for what's unique for us, we're having uh, an endless, you know, food fight in the cafeteria and no one wins, <laughs> but it sure is fun. So let's keep talking about it.